Hello everybody, I'm Daniel Goodemo, this is Christopher Graves, and Ooh. this is Matt Weiss. Yo. And we are from Milwaukee to Nashville, brought to you by the wonderful folks at Hockey Locker, 2002 West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Milwaukee's number one one-stop shop for all your hockey needs. You can call them at... 414-800-7585. Or visit their website at... HockeyLockerMilwaukee.com. You can go there and get all your uh, hockey needs, your figure skating needs, and your uh, inline skating needs. Sticks, gloves, helmets, pads, you name it. Referee equipment. Except for glasses, they don't provide those there. You you, Non-sponsored, but you can get your glasses at Wisconsin Vision. A <laughs> proud sponsor of one of the teams we cover. Yeah, you can get your skin sharpened. You can get uh, jersey customizations. You can get retro NHL jerseys. Speaking of, you can drop your skates down there anytime, even when they're closed. Just as long as you put your skate guards on them. you got to put your skate guards on those things. Oh, and you need to leave some contact info, because otherwise he won't know who to call. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Contact info, uh, blade was it blade sharpening preferences? Yep. Yeah, they'll they'll take care of it. They do it all by hand too. It's not it's not just put in the machine, like it's carved. What is it? They're carved by a hand. Um, he does hand? he does it like uh what Hans did it in D D two. You know, just on any of the Mighty Ducks, Mighty Ducks movies, movies yeah. where it was still like it's hand old, motorized. It's the old fashioned yeah. traditional way. Of Basically, the the what was it the modern day wheel? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, anyway. so um, beyond that, we also have to give a shout out to. We gotta give a shout out. Oh yes, we gotta give a shout out to our friends at WASA with the uh, Wisconsin Adaptive Sports Association. WASA is uh, also partnered with the Admirals too in their sled hockey, if I remember correctly. Yep. And uh, WASA is uh, was it? They're a nonprofit group. All of their funds, uh, even with a, a sides of you know keeping their lights on just to keep organization going, the organization going. Uh, they fund all the sports and they include for uh, kids, adults, vets, uh, it's like sled hockey, uh, and a wide assortment of wheelchair sports. I believe they do basketball, tennis, uh, tennis, and uh, they do goalball as well. Um, we'll be putting a link in our videos and we'll also be putting a nice donation button down below. So if it says we're don't like, we're sol like soliciting donations, it's for WASA. But uh, yeah, yeah, we're giving the donation button a, a good go and seeing how it goes. And we got a nice shout out from that too. So we appreciate them doing that. And like, They didn't have to. They didn't have to at all. No. But uh, they did out of the kindness of their hearts or were returning the favor. Yeah. Yep. So uh, beyond that, let's get into what was... The trade deadline. Oh. So let's start with what happened yesterday. Yesterday. Let's just unravel the. Okay, so on the tw let's just start on the twenty second. As you guys know, if you've watched our previous videos, we talked about Mika Salamaki for Ben Harper. We can talk about why I'm happy about that, but <laughs> you, okay. can see, you can see that last one. Yes. Um. So we got Ilya Kovalchuk to Montreal for a third round pick, or oh. Ilya Kovalchuk to Washington for Washington, a third round. Yes. Third round pick. Winners. Mm. I'd say. Apples? Caps, maybe. I I mean, it's basically turning into Team Russia over there, but as long as Obi's leading the charge. <laughs> I'm I, not worried about it. I'm yeah, not I'd either. Say Capitals won that. Because Kovalchuk is a good player. So. And he was a cheap buy. So, like, yeah. not only that, but. Uh, and, and, okay, by the way, when I say cheap buy, I'm not saying that the third round that they gave no. up for him was cheap. I'm talking about the, what, 330000 the contract. Yeah, they're taking their cap into consideration on this too. Yeah. So, so what they got back in cap is is wonderful. It fits what they need with what little cap they had left. Um. So okay. Next up, we got Mike Green to Edmonton for Kyle Brodziak and a conditional fourth. Well, the Brodziak thing we talked about off camera yesterday. Yes, he has a back injury that permanently forced him to retire. But because he retired well under contract with Edmonton, they're on the hook for his contract until it's up due to like the player safety rules mm -hmm. so that okay so basically in the cba it states that any player that is uh retires or is forced to retire via injury their contract is not voided um they could choose to void it but because it was an injury he chose not to obviously he does have a family to provide for so right. 
And this was his life work. This is what he I'll did. I'll say so. Detroit won this. Yeah. Before you even ask, I'll say Detroit. They have to help Grand Rapids win a cup, so uh, I'm going to say Detroit won this. Well, Brozniak's not going to play at all, so no. they like got to. They have to help Grand Rapids win a cup. And that conditional fourth is as long as Greens plays in ten games, so that's a given. Yeah. All right, uh, Vladislav Namstikov for a 2021 fourth round pick to Colorado. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I call Colorado winning that one. Yeah. I don't know. I'll say Ottawa because they're stocking up on draft picks so they can rebuild. Why not? Who had the fourth round pick? Oh. Well, you yeah. can still rebuild. Yeah, you can trade around. Yeah, picks, can... I think that's what they're doing. They're trying to stockpile as much. Picks yeah, as they possibly as can. much young town for cheap as you can, so that way well, you get out of cap purgatory if they are in cap purgatory. Also, you, you have... This trade right here, I'll say uh, the Islanders one. Can we say what the trade is? Yeah, it's uh, Gene Gabriel Peugeot for a conditional first round pick, a second round, and a conditional third. The condition is that the first pick shifts to a 2021 first pick. If the Islanders pick is in the top three this year, not going to happen. No. Um, and the 2020 third round pick is conditional if only well, transfer to the centers if the Islanders win a cup. <laughs> uh, yeah, the Islanders won this one. Yeah, I'll say, uh, I'll say the Islanders won that. Can you say big if? Yeah, that is a big if. All right, next we got, oof. We have Vincent Trocek going from Florida to Carolina for Eric Holla, Lucas Walmart, Ito Lustarin, Lustarin, and And Chase Chase Chrisky. I mean, I know Holla. No, I'll say Florida won it. I I think Florida in the long run won this one. Because they've got more uh, pieces in return than just Carolina getting Trocek. So I'll say Florida won that one. Nate Thompson goes to Philadelphia for a fifth round pick. It's hard to say if that was a cap dump on Montreal's part, but I'll say Montreal won because they got a draft pick. If yeah, but them fifth round picks, they're hit and miss. Fifth round picks are hit and miss unless you're yeah. grabbing a goalie. Yeah. Well, again, you and they might need somebody to back picks. up Carey Price because Carey Price ain't getting any younger. All right, so then we got Patrick Marlowe going to Pittsburgh for a third round pick. That third round pick becomes a second round pick if Pittsburgh wins the Stanley Cup. I don't think this happens. I'll say San Jose won because uh, they need to start restocking. San Jose has been a joke for a couple well, years now. Well, I'm going to tell you right now because, like, I like being a, one of my favorites as a, as a Wisconsin fan. Like, them letting uh, Pavelski walk was the biggest mistake they ever made. Yeah. And now he's lighting it up in Dallas. And where's Dallas right now? Third place. Third place. Yeah. All right. Um, so we got Cal Rosen, who's a top defensive prospect for Michael Hutchinson. Toronto won that one. Yeah. 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 Hutchinson is not good. Not good. Yeah. All right. We've got Mr. Trade Deadline. Derek Grant going to Philadelphia. This is the eighth trade deadline in a row he's been traded. <laughs> All right, I'll say Anaheim won. For Kyle Crusillo and a fourth. Yeah, I'll say Anaheim won there. This is the most Anaheim will win in anything this year. All right, Wade so we got, we got Wayne Simmons going to New Jersey he's for a conditional fifth round pick. Now that turns into a fourth round pick if the Sabres make the playoffs. <laughs> And Simmons plays in more than 10 games, so it's a double condition. <laughs> I'll say Buffalo could make the playoffs, and Simmons could play in 11 games. It's a big if, though. It is a big if. We're hopeful, because I'm kind of sick of seeing them in the cellar. Yeah. But I'll say New Jersey won that. Another Anaheim dump. Uh, Nick Ritchie for Donton Heenan. Yeah, Heenan goes to Anaheim, Richie goes to Boston. Welcome know. back to Boston, Nick Richie. Yeah. And welcome back to Anaheim, Dante Heenan. So it's a flip of what they traded for. I'll say they both for We're here to Why take not? back what's ours. Yeah. That's it? Yeah. Um, so this trade is... Mm. Uh. Mm. All right, so we have Aaron Luchuk. 
And a seventh round pick in 2020 for Matthew Pekka. Yeah, Ottawa gets Pekka and Montreal gets Luchek in the a seventh key chain. round. They get Luchek and a keychain. Keychain in the form of a seventh round pick. That seventh, those seventh round picks. If, unless, I'll say Ottawa won it. All right. We know who won this one. That's an easy no-brainer. Edmer- Edmonton <sighs> gets Ryan Kuffner and Andrew Andres Anthonisiu from Detroit. Detroit gets Sam Gagner, a 2020 second-round pick and a 2021 second-round pick. On three, I'll Sam- say Edmonton won that one. Sam Gagne has been declining for the last four years. So, Edmonton. Edmonton. Yeah. They Edmonton got the young. surprisingly wanted something. Edmonton gets Tyler Ennis for not, a fifth round pick. Not the basketball player. Yeah, I'll say Edmonton yeah. won that one as well. No. Well, Ottawa. I'd say it's Ottawa. I say Ottawa won because of the cap. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Because and, right now Ottawa is just stacking picks that yes. they're that are. Here's the thing. This is going to be a hit or miss pick. Yeah. Because if Edmonton's good next year. This is still a back end of the fifth round pick. Yep. So you're still looking at, uh oh, I'm in trouble. I don't know what to do with this pick. You know, when you have so many picks, you're just sitting there going. Basically, like Ottawa's sitting at the poker table, knowing that they have a losing hand now, yeah. and just taking the poker chips that they have won already and keeping them to the side. They're not playing them. All they're doing right now is taking as many because now with these 2020, 2021 picks, they have collateral for next uh, next trade. Exactly. So uh, we got Derek Fulbart for a conditional fourth round pick. The condition is yeah. Unknown. Calgary gets Fulbart and LA Kings. They get a conditional twenty twenty one pick. I'm trying to Calgary help that people, one. teams that are involved in these deals. Yeah. Calgary won that one. Yep. Yeah. Easily. Oh. I know what this was. I'll say Pittsburgh won this. All right, Pittsburgh gets Connor Sheary and Evan Rodriguez, and uh, Buffalo gets Dominic Cahoon or Coon. Cahoon. Cahoon. I'll say Pittsburgh won it because Connor Sheary's a really good player. And, uh, yeah, and Pittsburgh, they're adding depth because I think Pittsburgh plans on going on another deep playoff run. So, as much as I hate to say it, uh, Pittsburgh's winning this one. I actually disagree, and the reason I say that is Connor Sherry has been declining for the last four years and is not going anywhere anytime soon. He This year, he has two goals and seven assists in 40 games. He is doing absolutely nothing. And right. Cahoon's well, if anything, a, he's a depth guy, if anything. Yeah. Um, so then we have uh, Florida and Dallas making a trade. Uh, Florida gets Emil Dehus, for, and uh, Dallas gets Buffalo's 2020 sixth round pick. I'll say Florida won that. Because six round picks are iffy. Yep. Hmm. Well, Carolina won this one. Yeah, I just saw that part, and I'm like, yep. So Sammy Votnin goes to Carolina for Yanni Kokinen. Yeah, New Jersey picked up Kokinen, Frederick Clausen, uh, Cleason, in a conditional 2020 fourth round pick. Damn, and what's the condition? And New Jersey has to retain 50% of Votnin's uh, sal- salary in the transaction. So, yeah, Carolina won that one. Yeah, that's an easy... I don't know what the condition is. If they don't have it down there, I won't know. Yeah. All right. Oh, do not... Mm. Robin Leonard was traded to the Vegas Golden Knights for Malcolm Subban, uh, Slava Demon, and a second-round pick from Pittsburgh. Yeah, a 2020 second-rounder. Yeah, so Chicago dumps mm. Leonard her best goalie. Yeah. Again, I'm saying Vegas wins this one. Yep, I'm Vegas. Vegas wins this one because Chicago doesn't know goalie talent if it had to, if it's if it hits him across the face. Yeah. 
What are they doing? I'm not, I'm not saying that Malcolm Subban isn't a bad... I'm not saying that he's, he's a, a bad goalie. Malcolm he's, Subban's like a good backup. But you have and Robin... Chicago's trying to build their goalie uh, lineup of just career backups. Well, <laughs> no, they're basically farming goalies. That's yeah. it. Yeah, it's it's basically you, you get a guy who has a contract for the next year, and then you offshore him next trade deadline. And not only that, Robin Leonard knew the... Was it the Blackhawks system, like... In the back of his hand, and you're basically just done. And he wanted to stay there, but so again, just proving that they're not going to let Corey Crawford go until he falls over. All right. Next so we got Columbus getting Devin Shore from Anaheim for Sonny Milano. Anaheim won this one. Yep. Sonny Milano is a very talented young hockey player. And the Blue Jackets are a clueless organization. <laughs> Still one of the worst organizations. Hey, if Anaheim could pull themselves up out of the gutter, that would be good. What expansion draft or what, what expansion year was uh, the uh, Blue Jackets from? Uh, was it 98, 99? Yeah, did they come in the same year as the Preds? The same year as the Wild. Wild? Yeah. Mm. But no, like, again, proving again that. That organization, they've only been to the playoffs well, how many times? Like two, three? Yeah, two or three times since their uh, inaugural yeah. year. Yeah, uh, Blue Jackets have been pretty inept. Yeah. All right, so here's this one, and this one will kind of make me laugh. All right, so Carolina trades for Brady Shea for a sec first round pick to the Rangers. Carolina will have the option to decide whether they trade their own pick or Toronto Maple Leafs first round pick to the Rangers before the draft. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Basically, they get to play God here? Yeah. So they get to wait till the end of the season to see where they uh, shake out. Oh, this man. this pick will most likely have, the decision will most likely have to be made before for the lottery, yeah. but yeah. <laughs> in the end, here I still Some say. These, why do they even allow teams to have these conditional picks? I mean, look at this condition. This is stupid. It's a good way to protect the the team to protect itself. Yeah, yeah I guess. So it's kind who, of funny if you read some. Who, so who are we saying won that one, guys? Nobody. Nobody. <laughs> guys. Wow. Nobody. This is a clear stalemate. We win because we'll have something to make fun of. Exactly. We'll have something to make fun of at the draft. Yeah. Just watching was it Carolina, New York, and uh, was it Rangers and uh, Toronto fans kill each other? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we got Louis Domingue being traded again at the deadline oh. for Zane McIntyre, a 21-year-old goalie. Yeah. To New uh, Jersey. Vancouver Promising. gets Domingue and McIntyre goes to New Jersey. All right. This oh, who won that one though? Stalemate. Stalemate again. I, because I, Deming Deming's a good backup, but he's mostly a good AHL I'm starter. Gonna, whereas Zay McIntyre is young and still has that has it. He has his upside. So, like, would you say that he's got more time with the Binghamton Devils then? Yeah. So again, more time for him to shine. So I would say New Jersey kind of gets the. As much the as plus, you'd hate to say, yeah. I'd hate to say it, but then again, he could be an up, was an upstart. All right, so I'm going to say this before this trade. San Jose was doing everything they could to get a first-round pick this year. <laughs> and it turned out to be this trade. Uh. So the Tampa Bay Lightning trade their 2020 first-round pick at Anthony Greco for Barclay Goodrow and a third-round pick from Philadelphia. Yeah, so San Jose won that one. Yeah, San Jose. Barclay Goudreau is not worth a first round pick. I don't care where you're drafting. Yeah. He is barely worth a second round pick. Now here goes one that Dan will be happy to talk about. Yeah, I'm happy about it too. All right, so we get to get to no longer see Matt Irwin on the scratch list. Yeah, he'll be on Anaheim's scratch list. <laughs> <laughs> I joke, but it might happen. All right, so we have Corbinian Holzer. Going to Nashville from Anaheim. A solid D for a mediocre D. I'll take it. Yeah, Nashville I'll say wins. Nashville wins this one. That's putting bias aside, looking at the way Corbinian, or Corbinian Holzer plays. Just, like, looking it up, yeah. 
He's not afraid to scrap either. This is just the same thing with the Ben Harper thing yeah. for Mika Salamaki. Ooh, we're getting some bodies that are really going to, you know, check, board, like check in the boards. And here's the thing. If you actually look... Mm. Yep. If you actually look at this next trade, Anaheim is actually building a okay team now. <laughs> yeah, now. If you look at their development pipe, they're not terrible. They're just kind of middling out. The San Diego Gulls aren't a, a bad team. It's just right now they're like there's so much going on in the Pacific Division yeah. and all the call ups. Every kind of fluctuation you can imagine from the ECHL to the NHL and onward. Well, mm. Anaheim gets a uh, Christian juice. juice juice from Washington and Washington gets Daniel Sprung. Washington won. Yep. Yeah. Even though Juice is a good defenseman. I mean Anaheim did add to their team a Washington one. Um we got Nick Cousins for a fourth. How many times are you going to get traded? Yeah, Vegas gets Cousins, and Montreal gets a 2021 fourth rounder. Nick Cousins got traded last year to Montreal. Then the year before that, he got traded to Philadelphia. So All right. A Montreal one. Just All me. right. This mm -hmm. is the dumbest trade I ever saw. But it's Columbus, so do you expect anything worse? I expected them to say they get a hockey stick and a bag of pucks, but okay. Mm -hmm. We, we want Marcus Hannikin and gets a bag of sand and nothing to do yeah. with it. Hannikin yeah, Hannikin goes to Marcus Arizona. Marcus Hannikin gets uh, traded to Arizona for a conditional seventh round pick. Don't know the conditions. Columbus, bad job, are you? All right. Before I get into this, mm -hmm. I'm going to get into this in the trade, but before I get into this, this is a bad trade. Yeah. Um, Nathan Noel, who is in the juniors for TJ Brennan. Who is 34 years old. And a former admiral? Yes. TJ Brennan has, has a career AHLer for a guy who was playing in juniors, putting up 60 points. Philadelphia won. Philadelphia won. And That's not to besmirch uh, TJ Brennan. This is, this is clearly all on the Blackhawks. Here's the thing. If you're hurting for defense that badly in your AHL team, you make AHL trades. Yes. You do PTO signings. See, this is something like TJ Brennan would be a sign for Rockford to sign as an AHL deal. Not for the Chicago Blackhawks to put on. Yeah. This is a mess. All right. Oh, dear. What do we have next? We have another Blackhawks trade for defenseman. Eric Gustafson... For a 2023rd round pick. Now, if the Flames... Wait. Blackhawks will receive the earlier of the two Flames third round picks. Yeah, Calgary gets Gustafson. This is a dumb trade. Matt Loretto for Jordan Schmaltz. Mm. Did the Islanders just win? Yes. What? Sorry, give me a second. Yeah, the Islanders won something. Yeah. Schmaltz was a... What? Is is a 20... Is a 20-point getting defenseman with a plus 30, and you are trading him for a AHL forward. Are you hurting that much in cap? All right, so let's talk about this. So next in that, you got a fifth-round pick going to Toronto... From Vegas for Martin. Good God. Zerkalos or Zerkals? I'm going Zerkals. Zerkals. And then in return for that, that the Maple Leafs will retain a portion of Ryder's contract as part of a three team trade with the Blackhawks. Huh. So explain that part to me because I'm pretty sure some of us, uh, some of us out in our viewer audience, are going to be a little bit confused by that. So basically, Toronto latched on to that to dump somebody for mm. a pick. Okay. That's pretty much the uh, just to that one. All righty. All right, so then we have Edmonton. You. Mm. All right. Sorry, Edmonton Andy. trades Joel Pearson, who is the leader in the WHL in plus minus, for goaltender Agnes Redmond, who has... 
the same percentage, I looked this up, of 7.82 and a goals against average of 5.6. Alright, I'll say Anaheim one. Yeah. <laughs> and a conditional 7th round pick. Just for the record, I'm getting like cap updates to my right of me if everybody's wondering what's what I'm looking at. Hey, <laughs> San Jose gets Brandon Davidson from Calgary for future considerations. Oh, Calgary's not getting a player called future considerations. I hate those <laughs> wow. so much. Wow, and that was the last one. That was the last trade of the day. Now coming to the Stockton Heat, future considerations playing at left wing. <laughs> That's okay. It was still funny as uh, so funniest thing to happen at the trade deadline. Oh, do tell. Um, so uh, Johnny Gaudreau skates off the ice during uh, during practice, goes to the locker room, and comes out with more sticks. And they're like, "What's going on?" He goes, "I had to pee, and I broke my stick." <laughs> and I'm like, that's the most hockey thing that was ever hockey. <laughs> All right, so overall, a really bombshell uh, trade deadline, really. Yeah, it no. was kind. It was kind of mediocre. A lot of I, seeing a lot of activity from Ottawa. That's to be expected. Didn't expect a lot of Montreal going for picks. I also didn't expect a lot of Toronto just dumping guys. Yeah. But that whole Leonard contract thing tie in now, too, because that's a three way thing. That's a three way team. In, uh... How about you on a bet? That's because they're thinking that they can pull Leonard next during the offseason. Which, if that's the case, I'd say Toronto will do a better job with them because they can actually respect a goalie. I'm not saying that Vegas can't, but they'll do better than the freaking Blackhawks. And there's no way they're going to be able to afford him and hey, Flurry. Hey, you and Dan could do better job of goalies than the Blackhawks. Well, at least we have eyes. <laughs> Speaking of Blackhawks and goalies, why don't we tell the oh. wonderful people how much Colin Dealey is making in the AHL again? He's making a million a year. To play where? In Rockford. <laughs> As what? A backup. To Lincoln. Yeah. Spending how much time in the ECHL? None. Th five games. So the Blackhawks got kind what of... What is going waiting, on? Waiting in the like wing. it's hurt, so when they... Well, no, 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 I get that, but what's going on with their goalie core? <laughs> Chicago, you want to keep your fan base? Get a goalie! <laughs> Crawford's not going to be there much longer. That's like us with Pekka. We're like, okay, we got Saros. We're good. We had Saros. He's ready to come up. And what, heck, we got Connor Ingram waiting in the wings. Yeah, we who do. might be getting the call because Peck's got yes. the flu. So. This isn't... This isn't... A... <laughs> Blackhawk fans, remember, there's uh. Predator fans talking. If we're ripping your system, I can't imagine what you're feeling. Well, they're putting up good forwards. Like, you can't bash the Secura brothers. Yeah. You can't bash no, that. No, but here's the thing. Tyler's not even signed. Nashville could go in tomorrow and sign him. Good Lord. He's under an AHL deal. I looked it up. They're like, no, they have talent in Rockford. They're just sitting there waiting. And the Blackhawks are just stupid and doesn't do anything. With but, you know, keep focusing on Taze and Kane, everybody. And yeah, Kane no wants part. to leave no matter how much you Whoa, focus on him. Right. Oh, we're finally we're done? Hey, our volume's getting in the right place. That's okay. We're not peeking. Mm -hmm. if, we, if, we, if, we, if we peek, we'll know. But, I mean, here's the thing. When you get frustrated with it, when I look back at today, the winner today was this group right here. Carolina won. That group they right did. there, they pulled some big names. Yeah, it's going to be uh, interesting to see how they uh, play. Oh, really and when is. Doug Hamilton and Brett Pesci comes back, oh, God, their decor is going to be so deep, they're going to have to bench guys making $4 million. Is it safe to say that uh, David Ayers was their good luck chair? <laughs> <laughs> the, the emergency okay. back. <laughs> Sorry, Chicago. You're not the worst team in the league. You didn't lose to a Zamboni driver of an AHL team. You didn't lose to your own Zamboni driver. Yeah. In your the heart of your own organization. And give them time. Give them time. I know. <laughs> but they, what is it? They signed David Ayers to what? Ten, was it seven days? Yeah. Just because, again, they, they're still hard, hard for, uh, for goalies? Yeah. Yeah. Let him. 
he's going to be backing up, but he's oh, yeah. the emergency backup for this. All right, is there anything else we want to touch on as far as the trade deadline Ooh. goes? No. Who, like, because we did see a couple of 2021 picks thrown around here. Is there anyone we should keep an eye on? Not I really, really to, to this I point. Done any scouting recently. So. But were there like I don't like I don't want to say like heavy consideration, but of any of them that you saw, would like who do you think we should keep an eye on based on what we saw today? I say based on all the draft picks they acquired, I'd say keep an eye on Ottawa. I mean, just yeah. this year alone, look at all the picks they got. In the first two rounds, Ottawa has seven picks. With yeah. seven million in projected cap space left over at the end of the season, which if that went over, what, yeah, they have ten picks in four rounds. If they can't improve their roster this season, I don't know. Yeah. So I'm gonna keep my eye on Ottawa for next season. For 2020, I'm also gonna be looking at the Sharks too. Yeah. Oh, speaking of Sharks, why don't you check back and look at Ottawa again and see who has their first round pick? Oh, never mind then. I take it back. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, I'm going to keep an eye on Ottawa next season. Well, yeah, Toronto's got no cap space to spare anyway, so. Yeah. Oh, yes, yeah, so let's talk about that because oh, you yeah. are having fun with this. Oh, yeah, a uh, cap space. Look at uh, the Blackhawks. Someone's front office needs to go on a bag skate here because what the heck are they doing? Yeah, the Blackhawks get hit with a, a bonus bonus. cushion penalty, which means that they were over... The trade cap. Yeah. At a whopping five hundred and sixty two thousand five hundred dollars. Yeah. So you get a nice bonus. Pal. And that's for the next three years. <laughs> Good job, Chicago. Stay classy. Stick taps to Chicago for, you know, having a phenomenal Congratulations, phenomenal. Chicago fans. You're better at being a bad organization than us too. What, they like saying that they're a better organization than us. They're also better at being a bad organization. Dude, All right, so let's see how they really did come out. Because I know Connor Sheary with Buffalo came out with, like, a $4 million contract. Dominic Kooning comes in with under a million. It was a cap dump. Yeah. It was a cap dump so they could be players in, in free agency. They need a goalie. 2021, they have a lot of that guys. Is, they have to decide what they're going to do. Speaking of Buffalo, back. I was surprised they weren't as heavy in the uh, in trade deadline this year. Well, well maybe they, they don't. got rid of who they wanted to, and they right. decided to stay. Because I know they've got a, they've got a flock of talent in their in their pipeline right now in the ECHL in Rochester. Yeah. Oh yeah, but, this guy is so such a talent. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 but yeah. we have an anti uh, bias towards this guy, Andrew Hammond, their goalie. Oh uh, yeah, he's in their pipeline. But when you really look at him, they're just practically waiting on Yuko Pekka Luka Linen. Lukanen. Um, he is twenty years old and is a, is projected to be the NHL's next top goalie. Yeah. Okay, we'll see how that pans out. But yeah, Buffalo, they don't have to worry about paying anybody until after next year. Yeah. Actually, they got a lot of people to pay after this right. season. Well, either way. Next up. Have... Next New up. Jersey. New Jersey made a lot of moves. Let's see what they got. Three first round picks. Pick, 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 All pick, pick. conditional. Five, six, seven, eight. So much red, they don't know what to do with it. Well, Vancouver, that should be a high pick. The Devils should be a high pick. Vancouver's in first place of the. Uh, West Coast. Oh, yeah. never mind, dude. Um, Arizona. Okay, so they got whew, Arizona's top pick, and they. If the Canucks do not make the playoffs in 2019, 2020, the 21st round. 2021. Okay, so yeah, they got three in the first. <laughs> So let's take a look at the NHL standings going into today. We've got St. Louis, Colorado, and Dallas. This is currently at 6.30 p.m. Central for anybody. Yeah. Because there are games probably today. There's only one. And it has, it's one-to-one -one right Ottawa now. Blue Jack, it's 1-1 one, one first. 
All right, so we got Washington in the east in the metro. We have Washington, Pittsburgh, and Philadelphia. In the Atlantic, we have Boston, Tampa Bay, and Toronto. The wild card currently sits at the Islanders and Carolina. Columbus is tied for third. Um, I believe Carolina and Islanders have two games in hand on Columbus, so they're probably going to be able to walk away from that. And over to the west now, we got St. Louis in first at a 82 points, Colorado with 79 points, and Dallas with 78. Uh, in the Pacific, we also have uh, Vegas leading first with 76 points, Edmonton with 73 and Vancouver with 72. In the wild card race, we this have... This is a long jam. It's yes. a very tight. It's like two points between the top you four. You honestly have a five-team spread here, maybe even six, that could easily shift. Here. No, not six. I'd say five. I know you don't want Chicago on it, but I still think they could possibly push. They're under 500. No. And they lost their top goalie. But, yeah. Sorry, it's a five-team jam currently. We got Calgary and Arizona currently in. Then you got Winnipeg in third, Nashville in fourth, and then the Wild in five. Depends. And uh, Nashville, while Win well, Winnipeg's dropping and Nashville's slowly climbing, Arizona's dropping, aren't they? Yes. Arizona and Calgary have been dropping over the last five, ten games. Uh, Calgary is five and five in their last ten that you don't stay in the playoffs by being at 500. No, you don't. Um, Arizona, six, four, oh. Arizona is 5-1, five, 4-5-1. Five, five, Winnipeg is 4-6. and six, And Nashville is 6-3-1. and one, So they got that little extra point. Now, the one thing Nashville has that Winnipeg, Arizona, and Calgary does not games ahead. is games in this. And that is, they have three games in hand on Winnipeg, four games in hand on Arizona, and two games in hand on, on Calgary. If they can pick up the two, the four points against Calgary, they're sitting in the top spot in the wild card. Yeah, and Minnesota's basically in the same spot as Nashville. A 6-3-1 uh, record. They lost their last one, but they had the same amount of games at hand with the top three as Nashville. Um, so but they're so sitting. They are sitting. Was it three points behind Nashville? To make that up, they are going to have to play well. And I'm well, sorry. They weren't playing well recently until they fired their coach. We're Did not. They? Let's not get into talking no. about Dean Evanson, please. No, please. Well, I thought not. they were playing good with Boudreaux until they let him go. Right. Just well, here we go with another Mike Yo situation. Pretty much. You get right. something going, and then you just kill it because right. you need to. So what else we got to touch on this particular video? All right. So other than that, uh, AHL playoff, primer. AHL playoff primer. Because, you know, it's that time of the year. Yeah. All right. So in the top four, it's the top four in each uh, division that make the playoffs for the AHL. We've got the Hershey Bears, Hartford Wolfpack, Providence Bruins, and Charlotte Checkers. Uh, I would not be surprised to see Springfield or Wilkes-Barre jump over the Charlotte Checkers with all the moves made today. Especially with the players going from the Checker to Springfield. <laughs> um, I just wouldn't be surprised to see that. Um, in the north. In the north, we got the Bellevue Senators, Rochester Americans, Utica Commons, and the Syracuse Crunch. Um, and then you have... The Binghamton Devils, uh, beyond that, nobody really threatening. Yeah, well, then again, Binghamton and Laval are tied right now. Uh, but Binghamton has a game in hand, so yeah. that's the why I gave them yeah, a nod. that's true. All right, so then in the Central, we have uh, the Admirals, Iowa, Grand Rapids, and Chicago. Basically, uh, deadlock for who's deadlock anything after, like, what, third place? Yeah. Uh, third and fourth are not catching first and second. No. Unless there's a monumental collapse between us and Iowa. Knock on one. Um, and then we have Rockford, who's two points behind them, but they give up two games in hand to Chicago and the San Antonio Rampage, who are two a point behind them. San Antonio's been doing a little bit of climbing while the Stars have been sinking. 
Uh, magic number for the admirals for anybody in our system are curious is uh, now that I know, a little 17. Yes. And our divisional one is at 34. League is at 35. So... It's shrinking. It's shrinking in fast. We just got to keep winning. We got a big road. Oh, man. Up. The Gauls are working themselves into a playoff spot. Mm -hmm. All right. So we've got uh, the Stockton Heat, the uh, Tucson Roadrunners, Colorado Eagles, and the San Diego Gulls. Uh, and then you have the Ontario Rain, who are the LA Kings farm system. Yeah. Um, beyond that, there isn't really much left. Uh, let's just give these guys our little Nashville primer on uh, Corbin Holzer. So Corbin Holzer is a six foot three, thirty-two year old, right-handed shot defenseman, the illustrious. <laughs> Or Corbinian Holzer. Sorry, I keep butchering the first name. Uh, he is from Munich, Germany. So he was originally a Toronto uh, acquisition. Yep. Um, he's played in 46 games for the Ducks with a goal, what, three assists, and a minus one. If you're able to hold a minus one on the Ducks team this year... That's impressive. That's impressive. So... I think they added him for defense and the physical side and the penalty killing. Well, this is the same thing that we saw uh, with uh, Ben Sharper, too. Like, he wasn't putting up the most impressive goals and assist numbers, but he was still putting up these uh, pretty good, uh, like, pretty decent plus minuses with, uh, with Ottawa. And uh, I, didn't, I don't think he did much with Toronto for the Toronto Marlies to amount to anything, but solid uh, defenseman. That's what you do. Yep. So... So, uh, that is our video. It's uh, over, everybody. The trade deadline is over. But just to throw a little huh? hitch in there, huh? the AHL trade deadline uh. is next Monday. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we just, just, you, just when, you, when I thought I was out, you pulled me back in. <laughs> All right, dog. but don't forget to check. Speaking of pulling people in, why don't you go pull into the parking lot at Hockey Locker, 2002 yeah. West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. It's Milwaukee's number one stop shop for all your hockey needs. Also, don't forget when we upload this video to go check out our friends over there at Wausau and hit that yeah. little donate button. Yeah, seriously. They can and uh, subscribe to us on YouTube. Let's get these numbers up. Don't forget to click that bell so you get notified every time we upload a video. Yep. Uh, for uh, Dan, Chris, and Matt, peace.